Hello and welcome to this edition of Ability Zone. I am your ambassador, Paul Amadeus Lane, Boston Abilities Expo, right around the corner. I'm going to talk about 9,885,735,220 reasons why you should be there at this Abilities Expo. We're going to be joined by a very special guest who's going to be there on Friday. You do not want to miss it. Her story is is really just, uh, how can I put it? I'm trying to find the right word. It's, it's really, really inspiring. I was trying to find the right superlative for her because she's that, that awesome. But we're going to be joined by her in just a second. So real quick, what I would like to do is show you again how easy it is for you to register and find out some of the great things happening at the Abilities Expo. So right now, if you're not driving, if you are watching this right now on your device, on, on Facebook Live or YouTube, this is what I want you to do. Meet me over at abilities.com. Let's do that together. So there we are. We are at abilities.com. And see where it says Abilities Expo? Why don't you go ahead and uh, go over there, drop down menu, Abilities Expo Boston right there. So we click on there and we scroll down and I always love this catchphrase, wicked awesome for people with disabilities, the Abilities Expo. You scroll down uh, and there you will uh, register for the event. And it's always good to register ahead of time, cuts down uh, a lot of the time uh, to do certain things. And on this website too, you can check out the workshops, you can check out other activities, parking, transportation, got you all covered right there. All right, folks, without any further delay, I want to bring on this next guest. She's going to be there on Friday at the Abilities Expo. So make sure you go to abilities.com and register so that you can be there and see this incredible individual. I am so happy to have with me right now this amazing individual. She's gonna be at the Abilities Expo Boston on Friday. You wanna make sure you go out there, get a chance to meet her, get a copy of her book, and just tell her thank you for helping us members of the disabled community to see how we can rise up and be encouraged and continue to make strides in spite of a disability. We have Roseanne Sedoya Materia. Roseanne, great to have you, my friend. How are you? Good, Paul. Thank you so much for having me today. It is truly an honor to talk to you. I've seen a number of interviews that you've done on major networks and to have you here on the Ability Zone with us is, is truly an honor. So before we talk about uh, the Abilities Expo and your appearance, please tell us, um, just your story out there. It's amazing. For ones who've been sleeping under a rock and never heard it before, please share with us your story. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, I was one of the unlucky ones that happened to be at the Boston Marathon on April uh, 15, 2013, was standing just feet away from the second bomb. And when I, when I decided to turn and run, I ended up running right into the explosion itself. So um, I am now an amputee above the knee on the right side and am living with one leg. And just something that I never thought would have ever happened to me or where I would be at this point in my life. But um, I guess I consider myself not disabled and not handicapped, but technically I am. <laughs> I love that. I love that because sometimes it's a mindset. You know, when we're going through things, you know, and, and I always tell like friends and family members, if you walk around saying, oh, I'm in so much pain. Oh, I can't deal with that. That's going to start affecting your quality of life. So you really have to just, hey, it is what it is. Let's roll with it. I'm still the same person. Let's have some fun. Let's encourage people out there and talk about just after the moment when you noticed that life was going to change just a little bit for you. How did you come to grips with uh, with dealing with that? Oddly enough, from that, like right at that point of time when I came to on the sidewalk in Boston, in my mind, I knew that I was going to be an amputee, although I never really saw what happened to my leg because it was tucked under me. But the first thought that went through my mind was, I don't want to live as an amputee. It just kind of came flooding into my head. But on 
but right behind it was the thought of all my family and my friends and how could I not live my life? I've had a good life before and it would be awful for my family and friends. So right at that point, I made the decision that I was going to get through this. I think that once I awoke and was told that I lost my leg, I just figured that there was no other way to deal with it, but just confront it because I've always been a pretty much a realist. And at that point, when the doctor said we had to amputate your leg, in my mind, it was what it was. It is what it is. I knew my leg wasn't going to grow back and there was nothing I could do to change that situation. Uh, Aside from my mindset, though, and I think having a strong mindset definitely is one of the top things that have gotten me through this, but also the support that I've received right from the beginning. And honestly, when people become an amputee, I don't know how they do it without the support that that I've received, because it's taken practically a village to get me to where I am here five years later. You know, what's really interesting, Roseanne, is I remember when I first got injured over 25 years ago, I, I worked as an emergency medical technician. So I worked in emergency situations, helped out a lot of patients, 911 calls. And it was interesting. And now when I was on the other side of the, the coin, that's when I realized, wow, people who are disabled go through a lot of things and now I am living it. And it kind of opens your mind up to have a little bit more empathy and just a little more understanding. You know. I thought I was a real, a real empathetic person because I worked in the field of EMS and I, you know, I had compassion and everything. But until you live a situation and deal with the situation, that compassion takes on a whole new world. It really, really does. I, I worked in uh, the apartment industry where I oversaw construction and operations of apartments in the Boston area. And, you know, we always dealt with uh, um Act like fair access to buildings and uh, making handicap accessible units. But once you're in this position, it really kind of just enlightens you on a whole nother level. And even to the point where for myself, I think we all sort of prejudge in certain situations. And I've found myself taking a step back and not prejudging or getting mad at someone who's prejudged me when they see me pulling up into a handicapped parking space and then like shaking their head because I'm in an SUV. But as soon as I slide out, their whole approach and their vision changes. And I, it's something that we all do. But I think once you're on this side of it, it makes you more aware of not to prejudge as much as you can and what difficulties others go through. And, you know, we all have our challenges. Mine are separate than yours, even though, you know, we're both amputees, but it's just a whole nother level that we have to think about every step of the way every day. That is so true. That is so true. And you touch on a very good point. And I know once who are watching and listening to this right now, they kind of have that same mindset. Because I know like with me uh, being confined to a wheelchair and a quadriplegic, some of the things that, that I, when I try to find like a handicapped parking space, I, I used to get really upset when ones would take it from me. And now this was, you know, kind of early on in my injury, I had to learn learn how to how to calm down a little bit. But, and my wife would always tell me, you know, that person who got it may need it a lot, uh, a little, little bit more than you do. He said, you have your wheelchair, a power wheelchair. So you can, you can scoot and go a little bit further. And then that made me think like, yes, yes. So if someone has a hard time walking or, or maybe someone who's an amputee, I would rather them have that space than me because I got four, two or three batteries and I can go seven miles per hour. So I'm, I'm good. I can do it. But but I'm so glad you opened up about that. And and when it comes to uh, the recovery aspect of it now, in your recovery, when did you know that you wanted to share your experience and your story to inspire ones and, and really be a source of encouragement to them? Honestly, I don't think it was something that came to me early on. It was something I think that I was kind of thrown into because of our situation with it being such a public matter that the media was constantly always there reaching out to us, asking if we wanted to comment on whatever topic it might be based on the marathon. And uh, as I did that, I really felt as though that it was helping me 
uh, therapeutically and getting through the time. So I think that talking about it was something for me that was important. It didn't need to be speaking with a therapist. I think just basically talking about it was really helping me understand what happened to me and where I'm going, going through in life, uh, in what direction I'm heading. And I also think though, that I, when I did start sharing my story, whether it be in an interview or talking to a friend, they're the ones that really kind of pushed me saying, you should share your story. You should talk about it with people and present it because it is something that would help others. I have a hard time when people do come up to me and say, you're so inspiring because to me, I'm just Roseanne Stoya, who I was before. Maybe I'm now Roseanne Stoya Materia, but I'm that same person I was before April 15, 2013. And it's hard for me to understand what they mean by inspiring. I think I'm only doing what I would hope somebody else would do. But it's important for me to take my message from what people tell me and share it because I had so many people who really came to my aid, just sharing their story and seeing what they've accomplished with any of their accidents or situations they may have. I've met amputees from all over the country that have like shared their stories and told me in the end that I would be okay. And that was really important. And it's important for me to do that and show others that if they're in a bad situation, they'll be okay too. You know, and you said something very interesting that, that kind of resonates with me right now about uh, feeling that, you know, not really uh, being an inspiration or not really kind of get uncomfortable when people say that you inspire them, uh, I think, in, in a roundabout way. I used to think that way, too. But you know what? When I really started to, to just think about it, it, it came to my mind that there are so many people who are able bodied have no really major challenges out there, how they are letting life get them down. And then someone like yourself, someone like the other ones you talk about who are, uh, you look at them and say, wow, they're able to accomplish this in, in spite of their disability. I think they look at that and they're like, wow, if she can do it, I can do it. I will do it. And it's like, it, it's so inspirational to, to, to listen to your humility. Because, you know, I tell you, I think that's what draws people to you, the humility that you have and the fact that you're able to touch so many lives out there uh, to, to help them is truly, truly incredible. And, and one thing that I personally admire about you is that how active you are in in sports and, and, and everything. When did you know that after the after your accident that that you can still get down in sports you could still have a lot of fun try certain things when did you know you had that moment and were you kind of afraid at first to, to jump into the, the sports realm i don't think i was so afraid i was probably a little bit more ignorant in regards to thinking that i'd get my prosthetic and i'd get a running prosthetic and i would get right back to running you know I'll be honest with you, Paul, I like to eat, I like to drink, I like to have fun in life. So running for me was really that way to stay healthy and keep my weight down. So it was really kind of a goal for me to kind of get right back into it as soon as I could. Now, one thing I've learned the hard way, as they say, you need to learn how to walk before you can run. And I have to say that that is true because I, I tried up like pretty much immediately and it took some time. And uh, I really wanted to also try to get back to just doing things that I used to do. So I tried skiing uh, December 2013 with Disabled Sports USA. And I was at the right place with the right people, with the right equipment. But it was just too early for me in one aspect. But also in the other aspect, it was something for me to decide of whether or not it was something that I really wanted to challenge myself and do. And I'll be honest, I've always been just a scenic vista type of skier, um, one that would ski for maybe two hours, three hours and be the first to say, I'll hold the table in the lodge. So, you know, but it was just good for me to be able to try and see what I could do again. And I've been very thankful for these opportunities that have been given to me or presented to me and allowed to try to see where I am. Uh, I will say that a few years later, I decided that I would try snowboarding instead of the skiing since I could do snowboarding with two legs. 
instead of skiing on one. And I really had a great time and enjoyed it and swear I will get back to it. Um, hopefully maybe this winter, which I've said the last couple of winters, but I'd really like to get back there and try it again. Look at that smile. Thumbs up. We've been showing a little video of that and it's, uh, it, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome to, to see you, to see you do that. And, and to just the look on your face. I mean, that's, that's, it was very, I was, I actually did cry, but this time I cried tears of joy. Whereas <laughs> back in 2013, when I was out in, um, with the uh, ski spectacular in Breckenridge, I like cried the whole time. Cause it just had made me so sad. So even if I don't get back on a snowboard, it was something that just, it really made me feel good and made me feel like I was back to what I was prior to April 15th. That is awesome. Now, one aspect of your recovery was that uh, you kind of fell in love and uh, and got and got married. So t yeah. tell us about that story. Your first responder came to your rescue and he also rescued your heart too. So t please share that with us. Oh, I will. I. It is a, just a crazy story to think of, but on Marathon Monday, that April 15, 2013, when I got injured, there were a ton of people that helped, not just me, but so many others in that, in that crazy moment. Uh, but out of it, somehow I made a special bond with three of my first responders. Basically, they um, were probably the strongest three out of the scenario. And they're also the ones that came back to make sure that I had survived. And because of that, one of them happened to be Boston firefighter, Mike Materia. And uh, he was the one who escorted me to the hospital and left me there. And I think he really needed to know whether or not I had lived or died. It was just such a crazy day. And he kept coming back. He met my family before he even met me. He met my friends before he even met me. And when I say met me, we clearly didn't exchange cordials <laughs> on my way to the hospital. So it was really nice to get to meet him and uh, connect with him. And then just over time, we got to spend a lot of time together and realizing that, you know, we are the we're the person that the other was looking for, for our lives. And uh, it is really a great relationship that we have. And he's somebody that I love uh, spending time with, doing things with. And he just is my security blanket. And um, I just absolutely adore him. And, and uh, he asked me to marry him in 2016. And we got married almost a year ago, October 21st of 2017. That is so, so cool. That is that, that's awesome. That's awesome. That, that really, it really warms your heart when you hear something like that. And one of the cool things about it is that you allow photographers to chronicle certain things. And I want to show the audience right now, this picture right here, you, you trying on dresses. I mean, yes. this is like, this is like priceless right here. Take us to now. Now this wasn't the dress that you said yes to, but you were trying on dresses. Take us through just the, the process of, of this experience and everything. Cause you look very, very happy right here. Oh, my. It's I will say I'm not one of those girls that from a child dreamt of what your wedding dress is going to be like. I had no idea. But honestly, I could go back and keep trying them on today. It just it just makes you feel so, so special. Uh, truly amazing that what that dress can do for you. And uh it was just such a great day. And the organization that uh, the, actually where I got my wedding gown was through a foundation called Brides Across America who donate bride um, dresses to brides of military or first responders. So uh, my husband is a veteran as well as a first responder. So it was just an amazing opportunity to um, be able to wear the gown of my choice and to try on whatever I wanted and just to feel so super special. And I don't want to say that I forgot that I was wearing a prosthesis because I don't think that will ever happen, but I was so happy that I was able to hide the, the clunker <laughs> under that, under the gown. You look very beautiful trying on those dresses and everything. And, and, and I know um, this Friday or a Friday of the abilities expo ones to be able to, to come by and say hello. And, and what else are you going to be doing there that Friday? So 
I'm so appreciative of Disabled Sports USA. Uh, they're going to allow me to sell my book, which is Perfect Strangers, The Friendship, Strength and Recovery After Boston's Worst Day. So I get to autograph it and speak with people and hopefully share my story or help someone along the way that might be struggling with their disability at this point in time. Uh, you know, it was really important for me to put my story down in writings and it be told from my perspective since I was the one who experienced it. Um, there were a lot of interviews and articles that were done, you know, when everything happened, but not from our, from my words and also from the words of my first res three of my first responders. So I'm very happy that and fortunate and grateful that I'm able to share the story with people and sell it and talk to people and just see if there's anything I can do to help pay it forward. Awesome. And you're doing a fantastic job being an advocate out there for us. And, and it's an honor to really talk to you now for those who are, watching and viewing this from California, around the world, all these other states that it's not time for their abilities expo. How can they follow you and connect with you and, and just, just, just follow your journey and, and be inspired by what you post and what you're able to accomplish. They are more than welcome to follow me um, or look me up on robostrong.com, which is my website, or they can also follow me at Robo Strong Stoya, which is my last name, and it's spelled S as in Sam, D as in David, O I A, uh, and that would get me on Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram. So, and anybody can reach out to me. Uh, my email is Roseanne at robostrong.com. So uh, Roseanne, you can actually just Google me, and, and you should be able to find me. But it's Roseanne R O S E A N N. So, um, yeah, I'm more than willing to help and reach out and talk to anybody who might be struggling and see if there's anything that I can share. Or who knows? Maybe it's someone who might be helping me in return. It, it, it's happened. So and it does still happen to this day. And uh, Roseanne, thank you so much. Now, if, if there's ones out there who want to see inspiring stories like yours in the sporting world and 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 just get inspired by that, is there a website they can go to uh, for uh, Disabled uh, Sports USA? Um, yes, they can go to disabledsportsusa.org, I believe it is. And uh, they have all kinds of activities in different locations across the country. It truly is an amazing organization. They have given me the opportunity to realize what I can and cannot do in so many different aspects between trying to ski, snowboard, and even try to ride a freestanding bike. So, uh, you know, it's something that if you are considering or just thinking about trying to get back into certain activities, I would definitely look them up and reach out to them and see what programs that they have in your area. Roseanne, thank you so much. Make sure you follow her. Uh, Google her, follow her on all her social media. Check out her friends over at, uh, at Disabled Sports USA as well, too. And thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to share out there before I let you go, my friend? I'd just like to say thank you for all of those people that have supported me over the last five years. And I hope that I can do the same for others that come into such a situation um, and just and be there as a support uh, person. Now, you know, I forgot to ask you now, um about dancing um are you able, are you able to get down with your prosthetic uh not as much as i was before which is probably a good thing <laughs> <laughs> so so we can't uh, so we can't get you to do, to do the kiki challenge or anything none of that we'll see well i'm not i'm not opposed to trying i honestly i like to try different things now where before you would never get me on a spin bike and now i'll i'll ride the spin bike and you know i'm up for a challenge Bring it on. Well, if you're ever out in California, you and I will book you together. How does that sound? Excellent, Paul. Thank you. Great talking to you, my friend. You too, Paul. Take care. I told you that would be inspiring. See, that's why I can come up with the right superlative to talk about that wonderful individual. It was an honor to talk with Roseanne Doya Matera. Boston strong. That's all I have to say. Go out there, meet her on Friday. And make sure you go to our, our friends uh, booth over there at Disabled Sports USA. Now, we've been showing their website. Maybe you're not in the area in Boston. Maybe you're in other parts of the United States or a part of the world. This is an organization you definitely want to, want to follow for some inspirational uh, stories and some events that are going on, too. 
And uh, don't forget, let's talk about the website one more time, how you can register. Go to abilities.com. One more time, click on Abilities Expo in the middle, click on Boston Expo. You can find out the times, all the other great things, and you can register. Well, folks, do me a favor. Have fun at the Abilities Expo in Boston. Share your pictures on social media. Tag us. Follow us on, on Facebook for the Abilities Expo. Go to abilities.com. Find out how you can stay informed with us all the time. Great stories by some of the ambassadors like myself and others. Great inspirational stories. It's a great resource out there. Please, please follow us and uh, let us know how you're enjoying that expo. Take care, folks. Talk to you soon.